person, Laura Johnson. And Laura, thank you for speaking with us. I, I just wonder, first of all, it, it, it's very confusing to me. Why snooker? Hi, well, thank you for having me on again, Tom. Yeah, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm Laura. I'm a 38-year-old single mother from Essex, and I am a supporter of Just Stop Oil because uh, they are demanding that the UK government say no to new oil licensing. And I'm just trying to understand why your group would have been a, attacking a, a snooker event. Why, why is that uh, in any way relevant to oil licences? Well, I mean, the, the, it's time to pick a side. Um, snooker is a spectator sport and it's time to get off the sofa and get on the streets and join us on the 24th of April in London. We're going to be marching to demand a future for the people we love. Uh, you, you mentioned that Eddie had said that he's not having children um, on moral grounds. Well, I am a mother. I have an amazing seven-year-old son, Alexander. And how can I look him in the eyes when he's talking about his future, what he wants to be when he grows up, when I've looked at the science and I know how terrifying his future is. And if we do not stop this genocidal government, then there is no future for my son and there's no future for your listeners children, their grandchildren, the people they care about. This so is I, I'm, serious. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take from what you're saying that there isn't anything specifically about snooker that warrants this sort of action. What it is is just about trying to, to gain attention. And, and so to that end, can we expect that any sporting event, any event that goes on in the country really, no matter uh, what it is, could be interrupted by this group? Well, the, the fact remains that everything is going to be interrupted. There will be no snooker championship when the climate crisis hits us. And I mean, it's already here. Your listeners, they know something's wrong. Look at the winter. We had food shortages. We didn't have salad and tomatoes. We're only a few natural disasters away from not having bread, not having pasta, not having rice. And then how will your listeners feel? Will they feel like they, they did their moral duty as a parent to protect the people they loved? Laura, you're speaking as if the government isn't uh, acknowledging the existence of climate change. You're speaking as if the United Kingdom hasn't halved its CO2 emissions in the last 30 years, more than any G7 or G20 country. You're speaking as if this wasn't the first country in the developed world to commit to net zero by 2050. Is it not the case that the government is really singing from your hymn sheet? Well, well, it's very good, very good words, very good greenwashing that you've just given us now, which is, is that's how the government describes themselves, that we're world leaders. We're not. We're world leaders in lying. We, when we give you the figures, when they give is, the figures it, out... They sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Laura, I really don't want to, but we are a little pressed for time. Are you saying it's untrue that the United Kingdom has halved its CO2 emissions in the last 30 years? Absolutely. We're about to open a coal mine. So we're going to open a coal mine. And look, you you can't to respond to data with an anecdote. Are you trying to uh, dispute the fact, the established fact, that CO2 emissions have halved in the last 30 years in the United Kingdom? The, we don't include, if you let me finish, I'll explain. They may have halved from the figures they're giving out, but the figures they give out do not include aviation, transportation, all of our imported goods and our military. When you add those things in, which are very important contributors to CO2, our emissions are rising. I and think, uh, Laura, I'm, af I'm afraid I'm going to have to refute you there. If you look to the Our World in Data site from Oxford University, including exported emissions, emissions in this country have been falling. Emissions in many countries have been falling. It would be legitimate for you to claim, for example, they're not falling fast enough. But I think it's simply untrue to say that they haven't been falling. Tom, our government is planning to open a coal mine. That's just madness, OK? Renewables are nine times cheaper. Your, your listeners are dealing with an energy crisis where bills are rising. Renewables are nine times cheaper. We know that we have to move away from new oil and gas licensing. This is not what Just Stop Oil is saying. This is what 99% of the world's scientists are saying. I want to say one thing very quickly to your listeners. If you can imagine someone you love has turned suddenly ill, you take them to hospital, and instead of one doctor, there are 99 doctors there, and all of the doctors say, this procedure has to happen right now to save the, the life of your loved one. 
Are you going to listen to those 99 doctors? Are we going to listen to 99% of the world's scientists? Or are we going to listen to the genocidal government? And I urge your listeners to look after the people they love and to join us on the streets on the 24th of April. It's time to pick a side and it's time to be on the right side of history. Laura, I gently suggest to you that the government is on your side, that the government has actually uh, reduced the amount of coal and energy generation almost exponentially. It's only about one or two percent now when it used to be over 30 percent of our energy coming from those dirtier fuels. I, I'm, I'm just slightly confused as to why you seem so against a government that has signed up to just about every single one of your aims and values. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry. We do have to get to a break, Laura. I'd love to talk to you again at some point. I, I really do appreciate you coming on and having this debate with us here. But thank you so much for your time this afternoon.